Hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. We're actually going to do a little crossing of the streams, Photoshop and Premiere Pro, but it's all for a good cause because it all has to do with color grading. And I don't know about you, but I like a little color grading. Uh, we're going to jump in and take a look at this really cool tool that you can uh, get for free that will allow you to create LUTs using some stuff in Photoshop that you previously couldn't. And you know what? Instead of explaining it, let's jump into Photoshop and check it out right now. All right, it all begins here in Adobe Premiere Pro. I know I'm mixing up Photoshop and Premiere Pro, but uh, it's, this is a Premiere Pro tutorial. We just happen to use a little Photoshop, and we happen to use another little application. It's this LUT generator. Check it out. The link for it is down in the description. You can download it. It's a pay as much as you want kind of thing, so you can take it for free, or you can throw a couple bucks the way of the uh, creator, or check out their LUT packs and some of the cool stuff that they have. Uh, but download this, get it on your computer, and install it, because we're going to be using this puppy today. Now, how does this whole thing begin? Well. I've got some footage here in Premiere of these kids. This is footage, by the way, from my buddies over at Savage Stock. You can check out the link to their website, savagestock.net. It's down in uh, the description to this video. Not sponsored, but they're cool, and they have some amazing footage, so you should check it out. Uh, anyway, this is Mont Saint Michel over in France, and uh, what an epic-looking place. So I want to I, I wanna grade this, but maybe we also want to add a LUT to this shot and also maybe to this shot as well. We're going to play with all these shots here in Premiere. Uh, so what, I, what I'll do, I think I'll begin with this and we'll create the LUT for this and then we'll apply it to the other shots. So just find a frame that you like and go ahead and export the frame. I'm going to name it whatever. I'll just name it still. Uh, JPEG is fine. You could go, I guess, a little high quality, more high quality technically and go PNG. That might be better. We're going to hit OK. And then we're going to jump over to Photoshop. Now here in Photoshop, I'm going to open up that image and it is right here. We're going to go open and here we have it. Now, Normally, you could export LUTs straight up from Adobe Photoshop by using adjustment layers, and then you would go File, Export, and you can choose Color Lookup Tables. Now, they have to be adjustment layers, and what that means is we miss out on all of the wonderful goodness that is the Camera Raw Filter. Now, if you missed that, let me do it again because I accidentally clicked it, if I'm being honest. We go Filter, we go Camera Raw Filter, and it opens up the Camera Raw Filter. Now, the power of Camera Raw Filter, and by the way, just brief interlude here, this LUT generator, they also have uh, a version of it that uh, will allow you to export LUTs from Adobe Lightroom. That's a different topic for a different day, though. I'm focused on the Camera Raw uh, bit of it. Anyway, what we can now do is perform all sorts of changes to our image and create our LUT. So I'm going to go first thing to the camera calibration. I'm going to say crank my red primaries up. I'll crank my green primaries up too. I'm going to knock the saturation of my red primary down quite a bit. Knock the green uh, saturation down a bit too. And then I'm going to shift the blue. Yeah, I think I want the highlights to be more of that reddish mangoey color. And then I can either push it up or down. I think I'll actually push it up a little bit. And then what I may do is go into my HSL adjustments. Go right over here to saturation and basically desaturate everything except the reds and oranges. I take a lot out of the yellows and greens. Not Don't push them all the way down. I mean, I guess you could. It all depends on what you want. And then just lay waste to the aquas, blues, purples, magentas, right? It's not doing a lot to this image, but as a LUT, this is going to do cool things to other images um, that, you, that you may be applying this LUT to. Uh, hue, I may shift... Uh, I may shift the reds to be, a, well, let me see, a little more orange or a little more pink. What do I want to do? Maybe I'll go just a couple ticks to the orange and then take the oranges and push them a couple ticks toward red. Something like that's cool. And I'm not going to mess around with that anymore. I will, however, go to the curve and I'm going to boost the black point straight up. I'm going to pull a little flat, sort of pseudo flat spot down there into the uh, into the bottom part of the curve. And then I'm going to boost the rest of the curve. Well, I'm going to boost it probably about the halfway point. Add a little bit more brightness to my mids. And then I'm going to lock up my highlights here. So I'm going to leave them right around there. And I'm going to grab the white point and just pull it down just to mute those whites quite a bit. So something like that is great. And of course, you, you can go in and do whatever you want. We can say, hey, give me a little bit of red in my highlights and then pull this down down here and say, I actually want a little cyan in the shadows. Red and cyan are opposites. And then with blue, we could say, hey, yeah, give me just a, just a little wee little bit of blue in the shadows and then pull this back, maybe just a kiss of yellow in the highlights. It's a little extreme for my taste here. Um, so I'm going to make it very, very subtle. Something kind of like that. Uh, that works for us. And what I may also do is just boost the color temperature. So just make the image warmer overall. Now I am kind of trying to make this LUT extreme because we can always dial it back as a LUT. So you sort of want your LUTs to be super powered and then you can dial them back to make it work for your footage. All right. 
Now what we need to do is come over here to the presets and save this. So I've got my user presets here. I'm gonna choose new preset and I'm just gonna name this, uh, let's go uh, LUT Chaser or something like that. I don't know, I'm just naming it whatever. We can hit okay and uh, there it is, LUT Chaser right there. All right, now we just hit okay. We've created the LUT. Now it's time to be able to speak to our LUT generator software. So we need to create this HALD. So I'm gonna choose create the HALD, save this right here on my desktop. And what is a HALD? Well, you can Google it and look it up. It's, a, it's a mildly technical. And what we'll do here in Photoshop is we're gonna open that up. So we're gonna go file, open, and you're gonna see here uh, what it generated was this PNG, neutral hyphen 512 PNG. We're gonna open that up. And this is sort of our baselines. This is our color reference sheet. It looks super scary and everything like that, but don't worry, it's not. All we have to do is apply our preset to this image. So we go camera raw filter, and uh, here we go presets. There's our LUT chaser, boom, look at all the damage it's doing. We're gonna hit okay, and then we save this. Now, I should back this up because one thing that I do, um, I don't know if it helps or if it's just a dumb thing that I do, I actually convert this to a smart object and then I apply the camera raw filter to it and then I save it out as a, uh, a PNG. So I'm just gonna save this, boom, and then I go file, save as, and I like to save this out as a PNG and as a new file. I don't know I don't know if one time I just got better results doing that or something, I'm not really sure, but that's what I'm gonna do here. So just neutral 512 lut.png, go ahead and save it. And then I got my PNG format options. I'm going large file size, that's what I want. I'm gonna hit okay. Now we jump back over to our LUT generator. It's a lot of steps, right? But it's definitely totally worth it, especially if you spend a lot of time in Photoshop and you want those powerful tools of Lightroom or Camera Raw or both. Then we're gonna say convert to cube. So we're gonna, this is gonna be the actual LUT generation and we just choose that PNG. So it creates, uh, it creates the LUT from our PNG file. We're gonna hit open and work in progress and done. Operation completed successfully. We have a LUT. So how do we test it out? Well, of course that requires us to go to Adobe Premiere Pro. And here in Premiere Pro, I've got my Lumetri color panel open. Now I should say you can apply this LUT via the creative portion or the basic correction. I guess technically basic correction is the way to go, but I tend to prefer doing it through the creative panel because we have our intensity slider here. So I'm gonna choose the look and choose to browse. And here it is, neutral 512 LUT.cube. We're gonna go ahead and open that sucker up and you're gonna see it's going to apply it to our image. Now it's a bit strong, but what do we have here? Our intensity slider. So we can just tone that down a little bit and there we have it, we have the look. I can just shut off my effects, there's what we had before, there's what we have now, we've applied the look. And if you do wanna take it a step further, of course, you still have your basic color correction or, or uh, non-corrections, but just effects that you wanna apply. Maybe we wanna reduce the exposure a little bit and either reduce or crank the contrast a little bit, stuff like that. You know, it doesn't hurt to play around and, and mess, mess with the settings a little bit and just hone it in and get it just the way you like it. And by the way, if we go to married couple, we go creative, we bring that LUT in, just like that, you can see it apply it's super duper strong. So I reduce the intensity a little bit and maybe I come over here to basic corrections and I say, look, just to tone back that exposure a little bit, maybe crank the contrast a touch, something like that. And then here for Mont Saint Michel, I'm gonna move up to get a, a shot of the, the whole situation they've got happening here. And uh, I am going to, well, you know, let's just go with import LUT this way. Let's go browse and let's just bring the LUT in directly this way. And you can see that it applies this way as well. Very, very red. I'm gonna go none. Let's go down here to creative and choose browse and bring it in this way. It should look the same, but we have that intensity slider to pull it back. And here I could probably warm the overall image, reduce exposure a little bit, push the contrast up a touch, maybe reduce shadows, reduce highlights a little bit, bring something back into the sky, and maybe just overall reduce the saturation a little bit. And now we have this shot of these kids playing in front of the castle, and it's all graded up based upon a LUT that we created in Photoshop thanks to the power of Camera Raw and our little LUT generation tool here. Well, yeah, this LUT generation tool, um, it's really not that difficult and it's a whole bunch of fun and uh, you'll just get better and better at playing with the LUTs, uh, creating the LUTs and creating LUTs that you know are going to transfer from Camera Raw very effectively to something like Adobe Premiere Pro. And there you have it. So like I said, a bit of a Photoshop Premiere Pro crossover, but definitely something that once you create your LUTs, I mean, you're you're free and clear in Premiere Pro, ready to rock and roll. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn those notifications on so you don't miss another video in the future. Also, check out this video here that just appeared on screen. It's a bunch of must-know tips and tricks from Adobe Premiere Pro. I think you're really gonna like it. A lot of cool stuff in there that can help you edit faster and just move and flow as you work. 
Thank you for sticking around and watching this video all the way till the end. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.